Today I'm going to teach you how to create properties inside C Sharp and I'm going to do it while wearing this very low cut and open shirt that I inherited from my dad quite a few years ago. So it is it is quite cold outside at the moment so I needed something to keep me warm and this one is is quite warm. So properties is essentially a way for us to go in and grab or change the fields that we created which I taught in the previous episode and as you can see in front of me here I do have just one field because I decided you know why put a lot of fields in there to just confuse you so limit it down to just one field so we have this private field which is a integer type and is called player health and is set to 100. Now properties are something that you'll notice that a lot of programmers, at least newer programmers when it comes to Unity, they don't use them that frequently, uh, if ever. And that's essentially because when it comes to creating these fields inside Unity, uh, we can actually change the fields in a very simple way, which is simply to grab the field. And let's say I go inside my start method here, I can simply go in and say I want to set it to 50 instead. And I can just do this. And that is essentially a way to do it. It will work. In the same manner, we can just simply reference to player health the field name and just simply grab the data but it's not really the best way to do things uh, and the best way to do things is using something called properties properties like i said exist to grab or change the fields but there's actually a couple of benefits to using properties instead of just referencing the field and then changing it directly uh, which i'll talk about once we actually get around to it first of all let's actually talk about how to create a property so what i'll do is i'll go down a couple of lines and down here, I'll go ahead and say I want to create a public int type property. And the property name is going to be player health. Health. There we go. <laughs> Curly brackets. Now, immediately, you're going to see that it's going to throw me a error message. And that's because inside a property, you need to have at least one get or set method. And essentially, the get method is a way for us to grab the data. And the set method is a way for us to change the data. So if I were to go in here, I can say that we have a get curly brackets, and then I'm just going to return my field. So I'll just copy it, paste it down, and simply do it like that. Underneath, I can go ahead and say I also have a set curly brackets. And then in here, I'm going to say that player health is equal to a keyword called value which is going to be the keyword for the actual data that we set it equal to. So if I were to take my property instead now, copy it, paste it inside my start method, and simply set it equal to 50. So now we're taking the property and not the field and sending it equal to 50. What it does is that it goes in and it grabs this set method and then uses the set method and whatever I wrote inside the set method in order to assign the value to player health. In the same way, if I were to just reference player health, it is going to go in and grab the get method and use that method instead. So this is a way for us to change or grab the data from our fields without having to directly refer to the fields. And now you might be asking, well, Daniel, why do we go through all that hassle in order to grab the field when we could just grab the field and not create all of this stuff? This is kind of like obsolete, isn't it? There's two benefits to using it this way. The first one is that you can actually go inside your get or set methods and you can add additional code in order to change the outcome when you use these get or set methods. So if I were to say, and actually one of my subscribers came with a very good point about this for the player health, if I wanted to clamp the player health, uh, let's say that player health should never go above 100, then if I were to go down inside my start method right now and just take player health and say I wanted to take player health and maybe plus equal, which means that we plus something to itself, which means that right now it's 100. So whatever I write here, like 50, is going to get added to player health. So right now this is going to be 150, which we shouldn't allow because this would mean that we're now going above what is allowed when it comes to the max player health. So what we can do is we can actually go in and create additional code, blah, 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 in order to actually go in and clamp and make sure that the player health never goes above 100 you know, using our own code. So this is a way for us to maybe create some restrictions or add different functionality when it comes to how we want this to behave when we change or assign things. And I actually have a very 
<laughs> important correction here. I just went into my get method and started writing. Uh, this would actually be inside the set method, just to not confuse anyone. Um, so if you want to make any changes to the way that you uh, change the data, then it goes inside the set method. And if I want to make changes to the way that I grab data, you can do it inside the get method. Now, the second benefit to creating properties is that right now, if I were to actually go into this field here, I can both change or grab data from this field. But if I want to restrict it, using properties, we can actually go in and say, okay, well, I don't want other scripts to be able to change this property. I only want them to be able to read it. So this is what you call read and write. Uh, so if I don't want them to write, but just read, I can go in and I can just simply remove the set property or the, the set method. And in this way, they can only go in and actually read it. And you can actually see down here, I get an error message because, oh, it's trying to change it, but it's not allowed. Another thing to point out using properties is that right now you might have the idea that one property needs to go to one field. Like that's how it works, right? Um, we can actually go ahead and create as many properties as we want inside our code based on a field. So if I were to go in and say that I want to copy what I have here regarding the property and paste it down, I can maybe create one that says display health percentage. Again, it might be a little bit of a long name, but uh, just to come with a, a small example of what exactly we can do when it comes to like creating multiple property based on a field. Uh, so basically what I want with this one is I just simply want not to change anything, but I just want to be able to show the health, but in a percentage instead. So going inside the get method, I can go down to the next line and just simply say I want to create a string data type. Let's just call it health just to, to make things simple here. I'm going to set it equal to player health. And I'm going to convert this to a string, otherwise this is not going to work. So I'm going to say to string, like so, parentheses. And I'm going to add another string to it, which is just going to be a percentage sign, like so. So basically right now what I'm saying is I'm taking the player health and because this is a integer data type, we can't combine an integer with a string because it's not the same data type. So I simply converted it to a string using to string, which is a built-in method inside C sharp. And I simply said I wanted to add another string to it, which is a percentage sign in this case here. So if I take health, instead going down here and I say I want to return. Oh yes, and we do also need to make sure we return this as a string up here at the top. Uh, so right now we're just simply going in and we're just simply returning um, a health percentage based on what the health is. So if we were to actually output this inside my console, let's go ahead and copy this and paste it inside my start here. Uh, let's say debug.log, which is actually something that I will also teach you about in the next episode. Uh, it's basically a way for us just to output stuff into the console inside Unity so we can actually test things out if we get an error message or something. Uh, so by doing this, I can now go inside Unity. And if we were to actually play the game, it should give me a health percentage inside uh, my console down there. So by clicking play, you can see that it now says 100%. Um, so this is a way for us to you know, create different properties that has different functionalities based on a field. But in most cases, you will be creating a property that just simply goes in and gets and overwrites. Or at least that's the most typical usage of it when it comes to uh, having a field and then having a property that has the exact same name just with a Pascal case, you know, by having a uppercase letter in front of it that simply goes in and just like grabs or changes it. And just to mention it, because I know some people might be pointing this out, you could also just take what you have here and just simply uh, delete this entire line and instead just return that line of code down here instead. Um, I just like to keep things separate, so I like to create a uh, variable up here instead for it. With that said, we also have something called auto properties and a very kind commenter called Matthias actually helped explain this to me because I actually thought that uh, auto properties were just a shorthand for doing this exact same thing down here. But it turns out it's not because there's a, a small difference between it. So I'll just go ahead and explain that right now. Um, so what we can do is essentially instead of writing all of this, not just the property, but with the field as well, I can actually go ahead and create something called a auto property. Essentially, the way that we create auto properties is by going in and saying again, we want to create a public 
Um, and then we have to define the data type. So in this case here, I want to create an integer. And I'm going to call this one player health, like so. Now, I'm still going to create the curly brackets, but I'm just going to put them next to me here since it is a shorter way to write it. And I'm going to go ahead and include a get and a set method. Now, I originally thought that this would just simply refer to a existing field, which meant that if I still had my underscore player health up here at the top, uh, as a field, it would actually go in and refer to this field when we created this property, just like we did before when we created the uh, the regular properties at the beginning of this video. But actually, if you create a auto property, which is what this is called, it automatically goes in and creates a field, meaning that even though you can't see it, it does actually create a field and it also automatically creates a method that goes in and grabs the data and a method that goes in and changes the data. So it does create it internally, even though we don't see it, which is good to know. So you don't create duplicates and creates a field for it as well. So if you just plan to have something called player health that you can go in and grab or change, then this is a shorter way to do it. Uh, but just be aware that it does actually create the field automatically when you do it in this way. So with this said, this is essentially how we can create properties when it comes to creating our code and how to actually gain access to our fields and change them if you want to in various different ways. So I hope it just kind of made sense when it comes to how to change your fields inside your code, because like I said, you can essentially just go in and grab the data and simply set it equal to something else or just simply refer to the field, uh, which you'll see a lot of people do. A lot of tutorials on Unity when it comes to like YouTube and looking up things, you'll see people that do this and I have done it many times too. But there's just some functionality when it comes to, to just simply creating a property based on the fields, which makes things a little bit more customizable and makes you able to do a little bit more when it comes to these fields to add some, some functionality to them. In the next video, we're gonna talk about something called methods. And after we've talked about methods, we're just gonna discuss one more thing and then we'll actually get to do an actual example where you learn how to create a small mini game inside Unity. So you can actually see how all this code that we're learning about can actually be implemented to create a small mini game. Because I've crammed a lot of knowledge into your brain throughout these lessons here. And I just think it's kind of nice to, to start actually making sense of things and showing you practical examples of how to actually use this to create a game. Um, I do also want to mention that methods is the last thing out of the three things that you need to know about when it comes to classes. Uh, the first thing is fields, which we talked about already. The second thing is properties, which we also just talked about. And then after you learned methods, uh, you have learned about the three different types of functionalities that we use inside a class uh, when it comes to creating classes here. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.